All right, welcome to another episode of Warrior vs. Zombie. And today, as always, I have an amazing warrior guest for you, Wanda LaRusso. I'll come back to her in a second, but let me remind you of why you're here. Success is a journey, it's not a destination. As warriors, we all have a history of ups and downs, wins and losses that are all part of making us who we are up to this point, and they provide a foundation for our path forward. We all battle our inner zombie, as well as those zombies in our world. And in each episode, I interview warriors who are aspiring leaders from all walks of life, entrepreneurs, artists, health practitioners, business owners, literally any inspired leader that has a story to tell. These warriors have a cause, they have unique value, and a vision that goes generations into the future. And today's guest is absolutely no exception. Wanda LaRusa is an awesome warrior. Her 20 plus year warrior journey started in the San Francisco Bay Area and her unique value is her experience and knowledge of diversity and multiculturalism. I'm sure we'll hear a little bit about that. She studied human development, self-development, human dynamics, mental health, relationships, and mindset. And she's going to get in our head for sure. Since 2000, she has uplifted individuals of all ages by teaching, inspiring, motivating and empowering them to enrich and improve and enhance their well-being. Also their personal relationships and their professional lives. So all in one, one-stop shop, Wanda, that's great. So Wanda has spoken to various groups at retreats, sales trainings, community and corporate events. And her volunteer work includes Seroptimus International, I hope I got that right, Yes. And American Business Women's Association and Toastmasters International. Wanda believes, and I believe this too, that a positive approach to any challenge helps people work through difficulties, gain deeper satisfaction, and more fulfilling lives and relationships. Wanda LaRusa. Welcome to Warrior vs. Zombie. How are things in your world today? Thank you, David. Thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, chat with you all today. Everything is going well in my world. Everything's great. That's awesome. So we're both here basking in the World Championship uh, Texas Rangers win, I guess, uh, from last night. I know that Neither one of us are that enamored with <laughs> baseball, the Texas Rangers, but with a name like La Russa, you must have some kind of uh, uh, interest in that, from at least from your family standpoint, right? I do. I absolutely do. So as, uh, as you can all see, my last name is La Russa, so I'm actually related through marriage to Tony La Russa, former MLB manager of the Oakland A's. St. Louis Cardinals, and more recently, the White Sox in Chicago. But uh, our family member, Tony, has retired recently, but not really being an avid sports fan, but I did root for the teams that my husband, that my cousin coached for, so. Yeah, and that's, it, it's interesting because the A's, you know, I'm from Kansas City. So if you wanna talk, you know, sports, I'm gonna talk to you about the Chiefs, and if the Royals would have done better, I'd have been a lot more excited mm -hmm. about a world championship Royals, which didn't last time that happened was in 2015. Mm -hmm. Good news here in, in Texas is all they've never had a world championship. They've been like one out away a couple of times, but never actually won. So I, I, I got to give it to them. You know, this is my now my hometown of mm -hmm. being here about 25 years. So I don't mind you know, celebrating with them, you know, you know, if they were playing the Royals, we wouldn't be going, you know, but anyway, so, um, but I do love that. But yeah, the A's used to be the Kansas City Athletics before mm -hmm. they moved out to the West Coast. So yes. Um, yes. I did grow up when I, in my younger days as an athletics fan or an A's fan. Okay. So, so I, there is a connection. See, there's, mm -hmm, you know, there is. <laughs> the world is very small, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually excited that I'm talking to uh, uh, someone who's related by marriage to Tony LaRussa. Yes. And, uh, awesome. and that's, that's very cool. Well, awesome. let's do this. I really want to get into, I want the audience to hear your story. I haven't heard it all myself. I uh, get a little, gave a little bit of a little bit of background there, but I want to hear mm -hmm. how you got from where you started 
and you get to pick where that is. Okay. To where, to where we are today. So let's take a quick break for the audio audience. You'll hear a little of our theme song, It's Not the Getting There by Ricky Jean Wright. And we'll be right back with Wanda LaRussa and hear her story on the Warrior versus Zombie. All right, we are back. And Wanda, I can't wait. Let's hear your story. Tell me how you got from where you started to where you are today. Well, I'm going to take it way back. Okay. I'm going to take it way back. So I am a professional speaker, a women's positivity coach. And people often wonder, well, how did, how did that happen? And like Mark Twain said, the two most important days in your life is the day that you were born and the day that you find out why. And so I know that I stepped into my purpose back in elementary school. So back in elementary school, which is in the mid seventies, I knew how to tie my shoes with shoelaces at a very young age. And I taught one of my classmates how to tie her shoe. And this is long before Velcro or before you can just slip your foot into a shoe, but actual shoelaces, I actually taught her how to tie her shoelace. She was just beaming with delight she was running through the playground, screaming, and everyone was asking her, why are you so excited? And she said, because Wanda taught me how to tie my shoe. Okay. Now, this is during recess. And before long, I actually had a line of other classmates wanting, they wanted me to teach them how to tie their shoes. Now, this is before my entrepreneurial spirit kicked in. I probably could have made a small fortune by charging everyone their lunch money. But, you know, I did it because I like helping. But I taught about a dozen of my classmates how to tie their shoelaces. And that brought me so much joy. And that's when I realized that I'm an altruistic person. It brings mm. me joy when I am doing something for someone else. So that's where it really began. And I thought about, you know, different, uh, different careers, you know, on the first day of school, elementary school, one of the first assignments is, you know, what did you do last summer? Or what did you do over the summer? And also, what do you want to be when you grow up? So I went through a lot of different things, but as I got older, I just realized that I really enjoy helping other people. And so I actually became an elementary school teacher. So I was a teacher in Northern California, San Francisco Bay area. And I truly enjoyed teaching the children their, you know, reading, writing, arithmetic, and all of those things, teaching them about science and about their bodies. I really enjoyed it. And at that time, I started going to a lot of in-home parties, direct sales parties at my girlfriend's mm -hmm. houses. It would be anything from plastic containers to cosmetics. But I started really listening to the compensation plan because the hostess or the consultant or distributor who was conducting the party, at the very end of their party, it was always two things they would ask. Do you want to host a party? or do you want to join my team? So I started really thinking about a lot of the different compensation plans. And I was thinking, although I love being an elementary school teacher, I thought maybe it might be time to do something a little bit different. Because being a teacher is not just a nine to five. I mean, you're after school, there's weekends when you're grading papers, there's lots of trainings. And I had a child at the time, and I really wanted to spend some more time with my son. Mm -hmm. And so I, as I mentioned, looked at different compensation plans and thought, okay, this is still a way for me to teach, teach, teach about a product that will enhance someone's life or teach some a new, something new. And I decided to join a company, a direct sales company. So I left, retired from teaching and uh, decided to be in direct sales. I was my own boss and I was able to uh, teach people about the product ways that it would enhance their lives. And just my customers and my clients and the people who were at those parties would say to me, you know, you have really explained things in a way that we really can grasp. You're very inspiring, very empowering, very educational. And just my deliverance. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how mm -hmm. you say it. So I know I have that ability to connect with people. So that's something else I was blessed with, the gift to gab. So I love talking, I love conversation, I love chatting. Within that company, I was asked not only to, because I built my own team, not only to train my team, but I was also asked 
to trainal and district levels, and even at some of the conventions and conferences. So I continued with that and just hearing from a lot of different meeting planners. So uh, managers and executives from other direct sales was asking me to come in and train their teams as well. And I thought, you know, this is something that I would really like to consider doing, leaving the direct sales and becoming a professional speaker. My niche, I speak primarily to groups of women. I speak to women at their conferences, retreats, also corporate as well. So that's how I became a, a speaker, just being, the ultra, that being altruistic and enjoying having some information, having some knowledge and sharing that and giving others tips and tools to help them improve their lives. Wow, that's uh, that's there's a lot of things in that journey that really fascinate me. One is the 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 teacher in you that you discovered very early, and that's sometimes um, you know then life gets in the way, things change, and you you kind of realize those things. So you you kind of went through that. Let me ask you this: so you you as you were going through those various transitions from you know your first recognition that you really loved uh, altruism, helping other people, teaching, uh, then moving into the classroom. And there's, I actually ran a Christian school for a little bit, so I understand uh, the challenges teachers. Teacher is the most undervalued, mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about compensation plan, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, there, there's no way to pay teachers as much as they're worth, in my opinion. So uh, also found, uh, a, done you know some of the direct sales or those kind of uh been a part of those known understood those ever since back when amway started mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. those kinds of things right so i knew i know what those are and and great business models and the thing mm -hmm. is uh the big big thing there is teaching it's mm -hmm. basically duplicating yourself right it's Absolutely. it's helping other people to learn how to tie their shoes so mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting uh, uh, metaphor, if you will, to because you know people come into those kind of businesses and they're not uh, business people; they're employees usually, and and uh, they're not uh, business owners; they're consumers. So they they know how to consume, but how do you teach or how do you educate somebody on how to use a product or how to take advantage of a compensation plan and those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. that's fascinating. So a lot, tell me, tell me about the, 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 the zombies, the encounters along, along the way, just through that part of it going from, I mean, what kind of things showed up? Um, Cause we all have challenges, right? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. any, any, any challenges along the way there? I did have a, I did have some challenges, you know, going from being a school teacher to direct sales. And the, the challenges were I was surrounded by a lot of supportive other consultants and such. Mm -hmm. and, and what I fell into was the comparison. Like this person was able to build a big team or this person was able to be elevated to a different you know, to a level. And I may be struggling with building a team or elevating and getting a new mm -hmm. title. And what I had to realize was that this is my journey. This is my journey and that's her journey or his journey. And I had to step away from the comparison. I had to realize that if I'm giving 110% and doing the best that I could do, then that's what I had to accept. And so those were some of the zombies. It was my, sometimes we are our own worst critic. And it was a lot of that comparison. And I had to step away from that and shut down those negative thoughts and just embrace positivity and realize, appreciate the people that were on my team, appreciate the titles that I did achieve, and just keep moving forward to achieve greater. Yeah, and that is uh, a big zombie, frankly, for most people is one of looking at what other people are doing and then comparison, comparing yourself to other people. It doesn't mm -hmm. even have to be in, in a business world or a team, mm -hmm. you know, a, you know, people look at that and they say, okay, I'm either better than them or I'm, I'm different than them. And so, and how can they do that when I can't, you know, all those kinds of things. And, yeah. and you're right. I mean, the overcoming that is really uh, getting within yourself, realizing that you are, as you say, on your journey and that's all you can own, right? You can that's own right. your journey and your ability. Um, 
any other any other challenges along there anything any life challenges i mean one of the things that occurs to me and maybe this wasn't a challenge for you but um did you as you were teaching and then you kind of segued into uh some direct sales was that a did that start as a side gig did you i mean a lot of people but actually okay. it did it started it started and you know and and sometimes in our lives you may have a, a naysayer negative nellies you know and mm -hmm. some people their opinions were you know you work you're an excellent teacher can you please stay don't leave us you know, and so there was that 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 heart, that heartstring, pulling at the heartstrings, and and wondering, you know, this is, you know, I went to college, I have my degree, is it in my credentials? Is this something that I really need to do? And you know, sometimes when you um, sit and think about things, sometimes I just didn't know if I was operating, making the decision, was that decision was being made from the flesh or from the spirit, if you will. And so mm -hmm. there was a bit of that challenge as well. But as I continue to really think about it and and talk to some of my mentors, I realized I was making a good decision to transition. Sometimes you don't know where your talents lie unless you try different things. And I believe that, I believe that you, you grow. Sometimes we may put our seeds in one place, but if you have more seeds to sprinkle, you can grow in other areas of your life. Yeah, and I think you're you're exactly right. And I mean, I think that's, that's a pretty powerful lesson to be learned there is that, um, when you have, I'm a heart centered person. I try to be, and I try to do things that I love. And that means that when I get in an organization, like in a school, especially, you know, you've got people that are counting on you. Mm -hmm. They look to you, you love it. You have to love it. You, it, I, I tell people, I used to tell people all the time, if this isn't something you love, if this isn't a ministry to you, I'm, I'm a yeah. Christian. I, I think you know that. I think we've talked about that. Yes. Um, not that I beat people over the head with that because it may, I, I think being a Christian is, is the best thing ever because life is real simple. I only got two jobs. One is to love God and the other is to love you. I don't yeah. have to like you. I don't have to agree with you. I don't have to want to hang out with you, but I do have to love you. I have to figure right. out how to do that. So that makes life real simple. I don't have to, it's not my job to judge, not my job to, to tell you how to do your life. But, but you also, we get into that where we love people so much, or we love what we're doing that sometimes taking that step out and getting out of your comfort zone, getting out of that very, uh, positive environment sometimes that even when it's the best, right. Changing to something that's going to move you forward on your journey from right. whether it's compensation, whether it's lifestyle. I mean, I retired be 18 years ago at the end of this month, but I didn't retire to do nothing. I just was putting 4 million miles on airlines. And even though they were paying me a million dollars a year, it wasn't compensation plan. It was just that the lifestyle. So we all go through those things. Anything else on your, on your journey before we get to today? And we'll, we'll, we'll take a break after we, we get through this, but anything else that you, story that to tell to share to share well it was very interesting because as i was going back to the direct sales and i was saying that you mm -hmm. know I was really comparing myself to people that's where i really learned the importance of having an affirmation and having a mantra and so Amen. as soon as i understood how important that was that's how i would start my day i would start my day saying something positive to myself because what you think about is what you bring about and it's really interesting because within that particular direct sales company, I went from not really having a big team and not elevating to I actually won a major contest and was wow. acknowledged throughout the entire um, company. And that's simply because I changed my mindset. Well, the mind, as I say, when we have zombies in our mind as well as in our world. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because when I have guests on this podcast, I've heard everything from cancer, childhood rape, hurricanes, you name it. I, I can't, you can't even probably, I, mm -hmm. skeletal decapitation mm -hmm. um, that they survived or went, moved forward with. I mean, there's so many things that can impact us, but it's the ones in our mind. It's the yes. ones that we embrace, the zombies that we won't overcome or we won't allow ourselves to overcome sometimes. And that comfort zone that comparison that reminding yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that everything is possible and you are perfect 
you know, on a regular basis. Yes. And not, uh, I think that's beautiful. Well, that's great. Well, let's do this. Um, I'm, if we missed anything in the story that come, becomes relevant, but I want to, I'm going to take a break and hear a little more of our theme song. When we come back, I want to talk about why you're doing what you're doing today and, and the value that you see yourself providing. And I could already see a lot of value just in hearing your story and then what kind of impact. So let's take a quick break, hear a little more of our theme song from Ricky Jean Wright. And we'll be right back with Wanda LaRussa and Warrior vs. Zombie. All right, Wanda, there's a lot of parallels there. I, I, I knew we were aligned and I'm always fascinated when I talk to warriors that God brings into my path that how, how many alignments there are. So, so tell me, why are you doing what you're doing today? I want to help people live their best, the best lives. And I know that I was called to do this. I've been called and told that I was a beacon of light for others. I really motivated and inspired a lot of people, individuals, couples. And like I said, Mark Twain, as, as I said earlier, I know my purpose and I'm stepping into my purpose and I know that I'm fulfilling my destiny. This is my journey. My journey is, is to help people. And I, at a very young age, I was very, very close to my great grandmother. Very, mm -hmm. very wise. Her name was Geneva. She was born in 1910 wow. and she lived to 2014. She was 104 years young. Wow. When she passed away. And she was a very, very wise woman. And she was the person who I looked up to. She was the most positive person that I know, that I knew. She, you know the saying, there's a silver lining in every cloud. That mm -hmm. was her mindset. I'll tell you, David, if I were to say to her, oh my goodness, they've cut off my left leg. She wouldn't allow me to blame or complain. She would say, well, at least you have a right leg to stand on. So mm. in every situation, she, she had a sunny disposition. Every situation, she was always smiling. She just evoked such positivity. And at a very young age, that's what I soaked up. And so I mm. always had a very, very positive mindset. And I remember just sitting with her. She loved tea. She was from Mississippi. She's from the from the South. So she loved tea. So whenever I would go and visit her, depending on the time of the day, it'd either be a hot cup of tea or if it was in the evening, it'd be some really, really sweet tea. Mm -hmm. But just sitting and, and having tea with her and just listening to her pearls of wisdom. And she always, she was a Christian and she always talked about just living life and being positive. It's like the saying goes, what you think about is what you bring about. Mm -hmm. And I just have always received the, the, the compliments or people saying to me that I'm such a motivational, inspirational person. Mm. And so when I was leaving the direct sales, I thought, okay, well, what am I going to do next? And I've actually had people say to me, you know, you should be a motivational speaker. You should be an inspirational speaker because you have a message. You have the knowledge and the tools to help people to live a better life. And one of my favorite quotes is from Mahatma Gandhi. And he said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others, which is why I completely enjoy volunteering, helping mm -hmm. others. I enjoy speaking and helping others. And even from the testimonies after some of my workshops or my talks, just getting the information, getting the feedback that I am doing what I'm supposed to do. And I'll tell you, David, I'm saying this in, in, in a form of, I give myself a huge pat on the back because I know I'm doing what I should be doing to help others. And that makes me very proud that I have the opportunity to do that. Yeah, I, I totally, totally relate to you right with that. I mean, I think that the, the ability to serve others, be feel like you're in, your grandmother is a great testimony, a great grandmother is a great grandmother, I guess. Yes. 104 years old. See, that to me is, one of the key things about retirement, because if you retire the way most people, when I said I was, I'm retired almost a lot of times people say, you can't be that old. And I said, no, I'm, I retired with four of my five kids still in middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't retiring from life. I wasn't retiring from providing value. 
I found what I want. I, I knew I needed to find what I wanted to do, but, and I found it. And it's a lot about just the thing you're talking about, by the way, motivational and inspired speakers. Uh, I, I don't, I've been told the same thing. I don't want to be a motivational speaker mm. because I want to be an inspirational speaker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want people to within themselves tap into their spirit, their purpose mm -hmm. and move forward in that, not me manipulating. Cause to me, mm -hmm. motivation mm -hmm. can be manipulating, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Cause mm -hmm. you're, you're doing something and you're getting them. So I know it seems like a fine line to people, but I think because you kept using those terms, I, I think you are, you have the inspirational mm -hmm. makeup that they're talking about. But your grandma, if somebody says you want to live long, do fulfill your purpose, have a positive attitude, realize that, you know, you, you've got value. So as you, as you move forward in this as, as a, Motive or an inspirational speaker as someone who's out there trying to serve others. Um, what kind of impact are you hoping to have? What kind of scale, that kind of thing? The impact that I want to make is I want people to realize how important, how important self-care and self-love is. Mm -hmm. And self-care and self-love, everything starts with a thought. Everyone has thoughts in their heads and it starts with the thought because what you think about is what you bring about. And speaking of the difference between motivation and inspiration, it's interesting because some people do not give themselves permission to love themselves. They're le letting, allowing outside mm -hmm. forces, outside people or coworkers or social media to dictate the things that they're thinking. And so mm -hmm. when I'm providing tips and tools, I'm actually giving some people permission to think kindly of themselves. The, the best way you could be a, a good spouse, a good parent, a best coworker, it starts within. Mm. It's really important. I want to really emphasize that self-care, you have to take care of yourself before you can give to other people. And it all starts with the thoughts, the way that you see yourself. It helps you build your self-esteem, your self-love, your self-care. It all starts within. And so that's what I hope to do. I hope to give people the inspiration and the tools that they need so that they can be the best people that they could be. And that's so powerful. I mean, it's not selfish. Mm -mm, not at all. To fill your cup before you try to share it with others. So even if you say, I want to do what Wanda does, or I want to do, I want to have that kind of impact. It starts with, you know, like they say, when you're on a plane, you know, if the plane's going down, the oxygen mass drops, right? You mm -hmm. put it on yourself first because right. you've got to keep yourself alive. You've got to, you've got to make sure because that's the thing is people are trying to give what they don't have. That's They're right. Not, that's right. Yeah. You can't give from an empty cup. And you know, self-care is not an activity. Self-care is a lifestyle. Absolutely. Even in my talks, I, I give some, uh, I give some tips on how you can do, you know, take a, take a bubble bath, take a walk, read a book. And people, there's this word called busy. People are so busy <laughs> and you're giving into other people that they're empty and they're depleted. How can you give from an empty container? You have to fill your own container up. So let's get of the word, you know, rid of the word busy. You know, sometimes I'll call my friends. How have you been busy? What have you been up to? Oh, I've been so busy, 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 busy. It's okay that you're, accomplishing some goals and accomplishing some tasks. But within all of that, it's really important to slow down and take care of yourself so that you mm -hmm. can give to others. I, I totally agree with you. In fact, you know, when I work with clients or I work with, and they'll say, I'm so busy. And I'll say, is that the objective? Mm -hmm. Was that your objective? If that's your objective, then you're very successful. Right. If that's not the objective, if if you're not striving just to be busy for the sake of being busy, mm -hmm. then let's talk about, you know, what you really want to be, what kind of impact you want to have. What does that ideal day look like to you? I mean, I live a version I've, to retirement to me is not doing nothing. It's doing what I want, when I want, with who I want, where I want, living a version of my ideal day every day and having the impact at the end of the day, whenever that comes, mm -hmm. um, that uh, I'm meant to have. And hopefully God will keep me around here for 
the years of man, 120, that I can live with the vitality of a 30 year old and the impact of mm -hmm. every new day being a great thing. That's what we, I think that's what I hear you saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you're striving for, that that's the, that's the fire within you. So anything else, what other, you know, any other impact? Well, it, it's interesting that I recently watched a documentary and it's about mm -hmm. the blue zones. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with blue zones? Yep, the absolutely. Blue zones. The ones that live for a long period of time yeah. and they don't, it's, and that a lot of that is not what you would think, right? That's right. And they're, you know, the blue zones are concentrated areas where people are living to over a hundred years old centurions. And I watched the documentary and it's really interesting watching their lifestyles are very simplistic without a lot of outside noise. It's about mm. just taking the time to smell the roses, if you will, taking the time to breathe, knowing your purpose, fulfilling your purpose, spending quality time with your loved ones, being outdoors, getting fresh air, getting the vitamin D. So mm -hmm. it's really important worrying. One of the centurions said, you know, life happens. Worrying is not going to solve any problems to be as stress-free as possible. And so I watched the documentary um, and I'm doing my best to take some of their advice and so that I can live and live a happy, full life, healthy, happy, full and healthy. Yes. Well, you got your great grandma as an example. So that's an amazing thing. Yeah. Well, let's, let's do this where, you know, we could, I can tell already, we can talk for a long time. And by the way, you and I are going to get together after you're, I think you're going on a cruise or whatever and going to have okay. really, but well, I'm jealous. Actually, I'm going on a cruise in December with my family. Sure. So, right. so yeah. I love cruising. So vitamin, um, D is vitamin, vitamin C, vitamin C is good for mm -hmm. the soul. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. The, the cruise is, is definitely something I, I learned to enjoy when I had with five kids, um, cruising was something where you could get away and you didn't have to worry about traveling and, you know, packing and unpacking and all that stuff. And you could, you know, get a pretty good uh, break in, in a week, which is hard yes. to do if you're traveling on the ground because you, you got to check in, check out, do all that stuff. Anyway. So, well, that's fascinating. Well, let's do this. Uh, let's take a quick break and what, the last break, and then we'll come into what I call the land the plane segment. I'll give you a minute to think about it. But when we come back, I want to make sure that the audience doesn't miss anything you think is the most important for us to take away uh, from this discussion. All right, so let's take a quick break. We'll be back again for our final segment of Warrior vs. Zombie with Wanda LaRusso. All right, Wanda, wow. Good energy, a lot of fun. And um, I call the who knows what's going to happen here. Right? Uh, there's so many things. I've got so many ideas for you, even on this uh, Be Connected platform, this project that we've been working on since 2020. Um, probably some synergy there with what you're doing, and I'm glad you're you're here with me there. So, but tell me if we take away anything from this discussion, and maybe you forgot, you hadn't got to it yet. What would you want to make sure we take away? I want to make sure that you take away knowing the importance of smashing ants. I have not talked about that part. Okay. Ants stands for automatic negative thoughts. It's really important to squash those ants. So let's say, David, you walk into your kitchen in the morning to make yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, or what have you. And on mm -hmm. your counter, a trail of ants has discovered your sugar bowl. What are you going to do to them? going to stomp them, right? Right, exactly, right. We're going to kill them. We're going to exterminate them. We're going to get rid of them. And so AND stands for automatic negative thoughts. And even though you may have positive thoughts, it doesn't mean that you won't, you won't ever have automatic negative thoughts. It just means that you won't let them control your life. So you want to get rid of them. And what you should do is you should recognize it, challenge it, and turn it around. You want to turn it into a pet, a positive automatic thought, like giving yourself a pat on the thought on the back. So once you recognize that a negative thought is entering your mind, get rid of it quickly, turn it around and think something positive. So I really want everyone just to remember the importance of focusing on the positive because what you're thinking about is what you'll manifest. If you focus on a lot of negativity, that's exactly what's going to show up. Focus on the positivity, 
and that's exactly what will show up. So that is my message. My message is about, my message is about having a positive mindset because it all starts with mindset. I love it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you you basically put in and get out, you know, plant those seeds, you put it in. I, I now understand also uh, why you're you were talking earlier about those affirmations that that positive, you know, because if you put that in, then you fill up your thoughts with those and some it's a little harder for those ants to find your sugar, if you will. So right. I can, right. I can see, right. that as, see that as well. Well, this is this is great. Thank you. It's it's been an awesome uh, journey. I'm looking forward. We're um, give a little plug. We're going to do kind of a de-stress your holiday kind of uh, mastermind or or event coming up in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. uh, from now. After you get back, you'll be all nice and rested and yes. and tanned and all this other yes. stuff and <laughs> and ready to serve. And we're we're going to do an, an event uh, in a couple of weeks, but. Um, how do we st you're on the be connected platform so anybody seeing this uh, on the channel and be connected you can reach out to to wanda i know she's on the platform i know you can find her she's started down that process and i and i think she's going to be uh, a leader here she doesn't know it yet mm. but uh, <laughs> but anyway so how else do we stay in touch with you wanda what's the what's the best way other than that to to reach out to you the best way is to head on over to my website it's my the spelling of my first and last night name no spaces it's wanda larusa.com my name is right there on the screen. As I said, no spaces, it's all one word. WandaLarusa.com. And if you head on over to my website, you'll be able to input your information and you will receive a free downloadable, which is Wanda's Ways to Live Positively. I give you some things, some tips and some tools of things you could do in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening to help you on your journey of living a positive life. That is beautiful. And I'm sure that people go, uh, by the way, for those listening, if you're you're driving on the audio, I will have the, the website and the links to find her on Be Connected and stuff in the show notes. Uh, so regardless of where you're where you're at, and if you're again just you're seeing the audio and video, uh, you'll see it there as well. Well, Wanda, it's been awesome, awesome. Thank you. I knew it would be great, and it has been. Um, so thank you. And David, I thank you for the opportunity. I enjoyed myself today. Thank you so much. Yes, it's always fun. Well, we're going to have to land the plane, so we'll hear the final outro if it's not the getting there for the audio audience. And we'll be right back or be back next week with another episode of Warrior vs. Zombie.